going to say it anyway. Even though it is not a popular view, it's not spoken of much, it's largely unknown in the world today, not even thought about, that the world that we live in is desperately ill, mentally ill, and the root cause of the condition is for a lack of the love of the Heavenly Father. Because I believe this, Jesus came that we might have life and life abundantly. He did say that in John 10.10. 10. But this is eternal life, that we might know the Father. That abundant life is rooted and centered in the love of the Father, that your spirit so knows you desperately need, even now. My bones are aching. My bones have been aching. It was just Father's Day yesterday, and I just felt the vibrations of the world yesterday were of pain. And the pain is due to a lack of a life without a soul that has never experienced the love of the Father for it. Apart from the love of the Father, there's no acceptance. There's no true love. There's no true satisfaction. There's no true revelation of personal identity, of personal value of destiny. Apart from the love of the Father, there's no true peace. There's no true joy. There's no true comfort. There's no true rest. It is vital to a normal life as a human being to be restored to the love of your Father. And I would submit to you that that was the whole point of Jesus coming to earth. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. The whole point of the cross was to forge a way back to the Father where you can surrender and submit yourself trustingly into his loving arms and you can be enraptured in his protection covered by his provision restored to his royalty to be removed from your burdens of guilt, shame, and condemnation. Jesus said, this is eternal life that you might know him. We read John 3, 16, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in Jesus shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That everlasting life is a walk with the Father. I love second, I think it was second Corinthians, I posted this just this morning. Second Corinthians 6.18, I will be a true father to you, and you will be my beloved sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. He wants to be a true father to you so that you can be a child again. I believe the essence of life is the ability to be like children, even into your 40s, 50s, 60s. Before you're forced to become like a child because of old age, 
where you're reduced to not even being, that, being able to feed yourself or change your own clothes. He wants us to live from a childlike heart, a life of dependency, a life of trust, a life of true humility, that he might prove himself to be worthy of trust. He is trustworthy. He is faithful. He has demonstrated his love for us. While we were sinners, Jesus died for us. The soul is what was lost. Jesus came to save this soul that was lost to what? The love of the Father. When the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. What is the knowledge that people are perishing for? I believe the highest form of knowledge that everything that falls under it are subcategories of this highest form of knowledge that people lack. It's the knowledge of the love of the Father for you. People are perishing for a lack of a knowledge of the love of the Father. And the perishing has to do with Look around you. People are walking around. Without the knowledge of the Father's love for you, you have no clue who you are. No sense of identity. No sense of value. And without a sense of identity and value, you have no sense of your inherent destiny. No sense of victory. No sense of satisfaction. No sense of peace or joy. So then what? You're perishing because you, you now are forced to the counterfeit. So now you're in the world system that is the system that is built on the predication that you need all this crap that you don't need. It's educational systems medical systems, it's health systems, it's systems of education, it's system of business, it's systems of politics, it's products, it's services, it's a system built on the predication that you need all this garbage that you never needed to be satisfied, to be whole, to be joyful. It's appealing to your internal nature image of God in you. You know intuitively, instinctually you were created for pleasure, for satisfaction, for peace, for joy. And the world system is designed to play you. To play off of your inherent needs and knowing what you need. Knowing what you were designed and created for. That solution can only be provided ultimately and most deeply through the true sense of the love of the Father for you, which can only come through faith in Jesus Christ, the one who laid his life down to open up the doorway into free access to the Father. That's why it's the most amazing grace, the most amazing grace Father sent the Son for you out of a sense of what you didn't know about yourself is how highly valued you are. The greatness of your worth and value because you were destined before he even formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. He called you by name. What an amazing grace, what an awesome love for you. in my heart and soul, tears. The Spirit of God is longing for us to come home, longing for you to surrender, to come home to your daddy. The highest expression of the mouth and of the soul is a heart and a soul that can cry out, daddy, daddy. 
Jesus made it possible to have that relationship where I can call out, Daddy, Daddy, Abba, Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for redeeming me. Thank you for calling me your son. Thank you for pouring out your peace and joy on me. I'm living from a victory now. I'm satisfied. I'm at peace with you. You're bringing restoration of body to me. You're taking away my desire and longings for things that could never fulfill me. Setting me free from addictions, vices. Alcohol, cigarettes, porn, gambling. I used to be angry. I used to be short-tempered. I used to hate myself. But how can I, now that I see and know your love for me, how can I hate me? Now that you set me free, God, from guilt, shame, condemnation, you washed away my sins in your own blood, love me you've always seen me as a son the one in whom you're well pleased thank you lord where my sin abounded your grace abounded all the more for me you never held my sins against me you overlooked operating out of this lost soul and that's what was the case when Jesus came to earth he didn't hold our, our sins against us he didn't expect anything more from fallen humanity how could we produce good fruit from a horrible root but now that he has come he has called us the trees of righteousness we are now able to become trees of righteousness through faith in Jesus, that he uproots the old roots. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, all things have been made brand new. I am a tree of righteousness. I am one with the Father. I am the one with whom he's well pleased. I'm the one he loves says John. We need to be like John. In the love of the Father, I found victory over the things of the world. In the love of the Father, I found who I was as a son. I was like the prodigal son who came back. I was coming back for the bread off of the crumbs off of his table. I would have been glad to eat with the servants. But when I came home, put his royal robe on me, he put his ring on me, he ran out to me. When he saw me coming from afar, he gave up his dignity as king and he, he ran out to me and embraced me and swept me up. I found freedom, I found forgiveness with him. I tell you, the grace of Jesus is sufficient, my friends. I am so convicted that in the revelation of the love of the Father for us through the, the, the cross of Jesus, the suffering and what Jesus has accomplished, we could live in a radically different world if this message would, would just be broadcast abroad, that Jesus came not just to forgive us, but to restore an identity that is at the root of our humanity, a sense of our value of our royal value to God and ultimately of the destiny that that is born out of a heart and a soul that is living in the revelation of who you are today that he will bless your soul and then consequentially your body and your finance will bring forth the fruit of his salvation the salvation of God is so great that brings you into victory over the things of the world, over diseases, and in the area of health, in the area of relationships with your, your spouse and your children, 
in your in your career paths, the things that you're interested in, where now you're not doing what you do for a dollar, you're doing it from a heart of service, from a, a pure joy that comes from doing what you love to do. Jesus set us free from the curse of toil and labor. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and he adds no sorrow to it. It's not about us, it's about representing Him well, and it's about God longing to glorify His name through our lives. But a mediocre, low standard, average, tolerant life will not get it done. The Lamb must receive the reward for His suffering, and it is a good life for you, my friend. Please come back to the love of the Father for you. Don't let your life be in vain. Trust him. He's powerful. He's able to do for you easily. What you can never do for yourself is find that freedom, that peace, and that joy. I got to go, but uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your ear. I pray the Holy Spirit bless you today. In Jesus' mighty name.